But I think that really started with my parents and the way they brought me up. It was never, oh, well, Josh, you don't have your legs on. It was, well, you better go put your legs on and go take out the garbage. So it, it started from that support system. And, you know, whether that's your parents, your friends, your family, just anybody around you, um, it's finding those people that you can surround yourself with that are positive thinkers, that aren't going to complain a ton, that are just going to find ways to help you get better. Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. And as we occasionally do, we are going to run this back with one of my favorite episodes with para-Olympian Josh Pauls, gold medal winning captain of the U.S. Paralympic sled hockey team, multiple times over, and getting ready to begin the games in Beijing to compete for gold once again. How fitting during a time where we face so much challenge and adversity, to hear a story of what it means to truly rise up when you don't have a choice. Or do we have a choice? You see, how you respond to challenge and adversity determines the story that you write. And you will find in this special episode of The Burn that Josh Paul shows us how connecting to your burn, choosing to rise up when you face adversity will give you the opportunity to become a champion in your life. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's awesome in life having the opportunity to meet individuals that inspire you. And I had a dear friend of mine, Brian Roberts, recently introduced me to Josh Pauls and Josh and I got together and we were fast friends. And his story is pure inspiration. Uh, Josh is a Paralympic hockey player for the United States. And it's incredible what he has accomplished in the game of hockey. So a four-time world champion, three-time Olympic gold medalist, and he is the captain of the team. So you talk about hard work, you talk about leadership. It's incredible what you've accomplished. And what I really love is your fire and your passion. And that's really what this show is about. It's about that burn. It's about what really fuels you inside. And what I really gathered from our first opportunity to meet, right, where mm -hmm. we became fast friends and felt like I'd known you a long time. And the inspiration comes from hearing you talk about how you work mm -hmm. and the amount of time you put into the weight room. One of the things that I pulled, which was extraordinary, was just your hand-eye coordination work, right, and just how specific and detailed you are. And I think for individuals to do that in life, it takes an internal burn, mm -hmm. right? It takes fighting through challenge. It takes fighting through adversity. Couldn't be any more excited to have this opportunity to spend this time with you. And so tell everybody about your burn. Where does the passion come from? Where does, where does that burn lie for you? You know, Ben, I think over the course of my career and even just growing up, I think the burn has kind of changed a little bit as I've gotten older. So, you know, when I first started playing sled hockey, my burn was really just finding something I could be competitive in. And, you know, my gym teachers in school, they gave me all these outlets to be able to play and participate, but I never could find something because nothing was ever tailored to me to be able to excel at something. I was never going to outrun all the kids with real legs. I was never going to even be able to play hockey better than them, even if it was floor hockey, just because of, you know, my natural dis disadvantage. But you know, it first started when I really wanted to find something, a, a competitive outlet. I wanted to find something that I loved to do, and I found it in hockey. And, you know, as I started getting a little older, getting a little stronger, playing hockey for longer, I realized making the national team was a, a, an option. And so then my burn changed to, I want to make this team. So it was working out. Mm -hmm. It was taking, you know, my weightlifting class and throughout high school to try to find a way to get better, even if I wasn't able to devote time because I had a high school schedule. So it was finding those little ins and outs and those opportunities I could get better. So whether it was working out or getting extra ice time aside from my team practices, it was finding a way to be able to separate myself from the pack. And to be able to be the youngest player on the national team when we won our first world championship and then the uh, second Paralympic gold medal the U.S. has ever won in 2010, uh, that was a real strong burn for me was to just be a part of that team, especially because right before Vancouver I got cut. 
and to be able to find a way not to sulk, not to pout, not to sit there and go, well, there's always next year. I found a way to say, you know what, I'm going to prove them wrong and I'm going to make them either eat their mistake or they're just going to realize that they shouldn't have done it. And so as I started getting older and started staying on the, on the national team, my dream kind of changed and my passion kind of changed. It didn't change from, well, I just want to win gold medals. I always, I've always wanted to help the team win. But it changed from just making the team to excelling and being one of the top mm. players on the team. So my motivation was I need to find ways that I can differentiate myself from being just a third-line role, a, a support player. I want to be one of the top players in the world. And that became my motivation up, right up, up until I uh, became team captain before the 2018 season. And then my motivation, my burn came from having so many players on the team that had never experienced the feeling and the absolute joy of winning a gold medal, throwing your helmet off, dogpiling because, I mean, as any celebration, it's a fun, it's a fun big pile of everybody. But in sleds, it's even tougher because you're strapped into this chariot, more or less, and you're trying to dogpile on everybody and their sticks and hands and heads flying everywhere. And I'm sure we've ta all taken a couple of bumps and bruises <laughs> from the, the celebration, but it was making sure that those other players that had never experienced it got to feel that again, got to feel that feeling. Because I know that it's just something that it's so hard to describe. It's so fun to do and it, it's something that I wanted for everybody else on the team because I know they work just as hard as I do and they have the same motivations they have family that would fly all the way over to South Korea to come watch us play and so the burn it for me has changed throughout that and now the burn's kind of taken as a it's kind of a I want to spread my story and I want to help motivate people and inspire people to not just sit here and go, you know, wow, that's really cool that he's won a lot. It's what can I take from that and use it in my own life so that I can have, have more success. And that's one of the reasons why we're so excited to have you on our team of speakers and the opportunity to partner with organizations that we partner with to share that message and inspiration. And one of the things that I pick up on with you, I, I would consider it a no excuses mentality. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing for somebody to say, I want to win an Olympic gold medal. It's mm -hmm. one thing to say, I want to lead. I want to become better. I want to be one of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. But when you think of that no excuses mentality, what does that mean to you? You know, as far as no excuses go, I mean, I think it starts with just not complaining about things because you really can never control everything around you. But you can control your effort. You can control your reaction to different events. You can control your attitude. And the no excuses, I mean, there's never an excuse not to do something. Sure, the forces may not want, may have not wanted me to, to make the team right before uh, Vancouver. They may have wanted me to work harder to find a way to, to claw back onto that team. And it's just finding ways to, to go about it and to beat those odds. It's putting in that extra effort. It's not giving up. Uh, and excuse is, is something that you find when you don't really want to do something. And if there's something you truly want to do, you'll find any excuse to not give up. Mm. It's, it's just something that I, 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 it's so hard to describe because I've just never really, I've never tried to even think about just not, about having an excuse. But I think that really started with my parents and the way they brought me up. It was never, oh, well, Josh, you don't have your legs on. You can take the gar I'll have somebody else take the garbage out. It was, well, you better go put your legs on and go take out the garbage. So it, it started from that support system. And, you know, whether that's your parents, your friends, your family, just anybody around you, um, it's finding those people that you can surround yourself with that are positive thinkers, that aren't going to complain a ton, that are just going to find ways to help you get better. And that's probably one of the biggest things that uh, I, I don't want to say necessarily I was shocked with, but when I first met you, you were so willing to say, hey, let's do this, let's do this. You were so willing to give advice, and it's those kind of people that you want to surround yourself with, and you want to just be able to interact and talk with on a you know, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis just to, to find that in extra inspiration because you know, every once in a while, sometimes you get burned out, and I've gotten burned out after seasons. I've thought about not playing, but you talk to other people, and then you find that you get that flame lights again, and then yeah. you start adding that fire to the, to the flame yourself, and then you're sitting there going, yeah, this is something I really want to do. So if you were to share, a to, to wrap up, if you were to share a piece of advice, so there's a child right now in school that's being challenged by a gym teacher, or mm -hmm. there's a child who's being challenged by their parents, right? Mm -hmm. So you think of 
what you had to do to take the garbage out, right? Yeah. And there's kids who are complaining about taking the garbage out, right? Mm -hmm. And there's not the disadvantage as you've mentioned. And yeah. what a blessing from your parents to have empowered you to embrace every opportunity that was in front of you, mm -hmm. whether it was playing hockey at a championship level, world championship level, or taking out the trash. What would mm -hmm. you say to those young kids who are maybe complaining, right? For them to embrace their opportunity. You just got to embrace the challenge. And, you know, when I was in school, I, I always would kind of get upset when schoolwork was a little too easy. It was monotonous. It was, this is too easy. I can just fly through it, right? And you got to love those challenges because you're going to be faced with them no matter where you go, whether it's school, whether it's work, whether it's going through, you know, your higher education in college, like nothing is ever going to go perfectly. I don't think I've had one thing ever in my life go exactly 100% right, except maybe meeting my girlfriend. <laughs> Uh, fiance. That's right. You got to get and that right. Now. I know. I, I know. She's gonna <laughs> she's gonna torch me if I don't. But it's you got to embrace the challenge because it's all around you. It's always gonna happen. And if all you're doing is sitting there going, I don't want to do this. I'm gonna complain about this challenge. Then you're gonna just gonna be miserable through the rest of your life because challenges never stop, and neither should you. So I, I want to share something. I specifically said speak to a child. Yep. Because I think sometimes as adults. Mm -hmm. we try to make things too complex. <laughs> and if you really pay attention to that answer, that answer is for adults, that answer is for children, it's for all of us. And I think yeah. there's so much truth there is to embrace that challenge for what it is because we're always going to have it. And mm -hmm. so continue to inspire me. Keep writing your story. It is, ju it is just awesome to see your leadership. It's awesome to see your passion. It's awesome to see your work ethic and, and know that, uh, that you inspire me and to have the opportunity to give. This is definitely iron sharpens iron. <laughs> mm -hmm. I appreciate it and appreciate you taking the time to share the burn and also very appreciative of your commitment to the country to go and represent the country. And uh, you, you've become pretty good at walking away with hardware. <laughs> so thanks for all that you do. Yeah, thank you.